is a lesson on rotations. We've learned translations and we've learned reflections. Now we're going to learn rotations, which sound easy, but they get a little more complex. Just like the reflections get a little more complex than you might expect. Um, first of all, let's, let's sort of relate reflection, or not reflections, rotations, to um, real life. And so we've got a bike wheel here, and a bike wheel rotates. Okay, and, and it, it rotates about the center of the wheel. That's how you say how an object is rotating, is you use the word about to say that it's rotating on that part. So it rotates about the center of the wheel. Okay, um, a rotation happens when a shape turns about a point. So you have to have a point and then it has to turn on that point. Um, it is rotated from one position to another. Another name for a rotation is a turn. So we have uh, a flip, which is a reflection, and now we have a turn, which is a rotation. So flip, turn. Okay, and then um, the other one was a slide, the translation. After one complete turn, a shape is back to where it started. So if I, um, well, yeah, let's just pretend that the middle of me is a rotation. So, so once I turn all the way around, I've done one complete turn, and I turned about uh, my head, I guess, or my feet. And we're looking at describing rotations. So it says shapes can do a quarter turn. So if I'm turning like I was, I'm going to do a quarter turn. I just did a quarter turn. Um, they can do a half turn. So if I start here, and then I can do a half turn. But I'm going to put these down by going, there's a quarter, and there's a half. Well, you could do a three-quarter turn. So starting again here, quarter, half, three-quarters of a turn. And then the last one is a full turn. So I would just go around again like I showed you before. Okay, I've got visuals of this. And you'll notice that I did it in quarters because that's the way that it's going to make sense to you to draw a shape once it's turned. Okay, so just so you remember, um, a quarter turn is one right angle. This will, this will help you. Just It might be confusing now, but just trust me. Uh, two right angles is a half a turn, three right angles is a three-quarter turn, and then four right angles is a full turn. Um, but that one's just easier to remember that it's the same position as it was. Okay, um, so you can describe rotations based on their, uh, how they turn. And then you also describe rotations based on which way they turn. So you can either turn clockwise or you can turn counterclockwise. And if you forget which way clockwise is, just think of the way that a clock goes. That's why I put a clock here. Okay, clocks go this way. So sometimes it's, it's best if you trace your finger along uh, where the clock is and think, okay, so this direction is clockwise because a clock goes this way. Counterclockwise is the opposite. It goes the opposite direction. Okay, and then we've got a picture to remind you that if time's moving backwards, it's going counterclockwise. So using that information that I just shared, um, you need to describe rotations using these three things. So you need to tell the direction of the turn. So you have to say if it's counterclockwise or clockwise. You have to say the fraction of the turn. So if it's one quarter, one half, three quarters or one whole. And then you have to tell the point of rotation. Now the point of rotation is like uh, about the center of the wheel, uh, about Miss Bashford's feet, okay? Um, it's usually going to just be a letter on a corner or a vertex of a shape, okay? So a shape and its rotation image have different orientations. Remember the translation had the same orientation. Um, the reflection had the opposite orientations, and now we would just say it has different orientations because it depends on the rotation for what the orientation is. It's just different, okay? Um, and then the shape and its image uh, face different ways for any rotation that is less than one complete turn. So unless it's a whole turn like that, then it's going to be a different orientation. Otherwise, if it goes a whole turn, it's the same orientation. So let's look at this example. It says rotate the following shapes about vertex B using the rotation given. So there's vertex B and that's on the corner. Um, and then down here it tells us how to do it. So it says one quarter or one half turn counterclockwise. So clocks go this way. So that means that we need to turn it the other way. So we're going this way. 
Okay, so what you do first is you pick um, a, a side of the shape that is connected to the vertex and you uh, start to count out quarter turns. So if I was to turn this a quarter of a turn, I would go like this and there, and then I would draw this right here and there's my right angle. Okay, so that's what that quarter turn was talking about, but this is a half a turn, not a quarter turn. So we need to make it go like this. Okay, and then what we're doing is we're taking this shape and then we're turning it like this. So it's going to be up like this. So we have to draw it the same shape, the same size. And we put this arrow in to show how it has moved. Okay, so this is a rotation. And it, we can see that it's gone counterclockwise and that it was a half turn. Next up, we've got this one. And this one um, wants a three quarter turn clockwise. So that means we're turning it this way. Okay, so again, we pick a line um, that is attached to this vertex. And it's actually pretty tricky to do it like this. So I'm just going to create my own imaginary line down the center of this shape, just for ease. Stay, stay with me here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to turn it clockwise. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to do three quarter turns to make three quarters. Okay, so I'm going to start here and I'm going clockwise. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. So my new center, and it goes one, two, three, four, okay? My new center of this shape is going to be right here. Okay, from here, it goes out to the end of this square and out to the end of this square. So I need to draw here and I need to draw here and it's actually going to overlap and it goes for two, two uh, diagonal squares. So I'm gonna draw two diagonal squares and then it goes in to this way. One, two, and meets in the middle. One, two, and meets in the middle. And I could get rid of this line once I'm finished. I might even make my arrow proper and say, there we go. There's my three quarter turn clockwise. Okay, so it's not that difficult as long as you follow what I just showed you. So we're going to take rotations one step further just to make it a little bit harder and uh, I'll show you some strategies of how to rotate. Um, but so this is based on um, rotating a, a, sh a shape about a point that is not connected to the shape. And I'll show you what that means um, in more in depth later. But if you can see this right here, there is the shape and there's the point we're going to turn it about. Okay, so it's not attached. So there's one strategy where we trace, and I don't really have tracing paper, but we'll just use uh, white paper and you can see through it if it's light enough. But anyways, what you need to do is um, you use another paper to trace the shape in order to find the rotation, position, and orientation. I know those are big words, but it's pretty straightforward. I'll show you how to do it. Um, so the steps are, so place the tracing paper so the corner of the page is on the point of rotation. Then trace the shape. Then hold the tracing paper with your pencil on the point of rotation. Then, so that's on the corner of the paper. So you draw the shape here and then you can turn it, okay? So then after you turn it, look at the position and orientation of the rotated shape on the graph paper below and then pull the tracing paper away and draw the new shape. Okay, I think you can see that. So the first step that we do is we grab our marker so that you can see. And so we need to put the corner of the paper on the P, which is where we're turning, because it says turn the shape a quarter turn clockwise about point P. So clockwise is going this way and a quarter turn is one, 190 degree angle, one right angle. Okay, so we're gonna be doing that. Oh wait, it doesn't fit on the paper. All right, we won't follow that rule because our shape doesn't fit on the paper. That's okay. We'll just draw a uh, dot to show where that point is, just in case. 
So it's easier for me, I guess, because uh, I've got the image being projected onto my paper. But if you look closely, you'll be able to see the line of your paper. Okay, so what we do is we draw our shape. Okay, so that is trace the shape. Now hold the tracing paper with your pencil on the point of rotation. So right here is my point of rotation. It's not a big deal that it's not on the corner. And then we need to do our do our uh, rotation. So woo, yeah, it wants to get going. So there, there it is, making sure it stays there. And then we have to rotate it right there. To uh, that was a 90 degree angle right there, right angle. So that means that when I pull my paper away, get my whiteboard marker out here, my uh, diamond is going to start right here. So I will put a dot there. And then, it's weird how that dot disappears, isn't it? A dot there. And then a dot right there. And a dot right here. And then we can put an arrow to show how it has rotated. So we've just rotated a shape. Make sure that you have one, two squares in between. And make sure you drew the shape in the same size uh, as the original. Okay, and it includes visualizing. So you want to visualize the position of the image by pretending that the image is on a pole, like a flagpole. So pretend it's on a flagpole. There we go. It doesn't work for all shapes, but sometimes it does work. So what you want to do is imagine that it's on a flagpole. So you could even draw a line just so that you can see it. And then rotate the flag while keeping the length of the flag the same. So when you rotate the flag, or I guess this would be the other flagpole, uh, it doesn't change length. That's important. Okay? And then once you rotate the flagpole, then take a look at how the uh, shape is related to the flagpole um, and to begin with and then draw it again. It does say turn the shape a three-quarter turn about counterclockwise about point P. So counterclockwise we are now going this way and we need to go three quarters so that means three right angles. Okay so we're going to draw our pole from a vertex to point P. Okay and then we're, all we're going to do is rotate the pole first, okay? So that means that there is one quarter, there's one half, and then there is a three-quarter turn. So we're going to draw one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And we're going to uh, erase this after because it's not part of the shape. But um, notice that uh, here... The shape goes out this way from this part of the pole. So when we turn it, let's put this marker on the side of where it is. So it stays on the same side. So now the marker is below. So that means that we're going this way. So that means that this is going to go down like that. Okay, so we've got to go one, two, three, four, five out. And that's the hardest part, it's figuring out which way it's going to